cartoons and toys go together like milk and cereal. And these days you almost expect your favourite cartoon to have its own toy line. In fact, we're now quite familiar with the concept of merchandise driven shows, otherwise known as the half hour toy commercial, programs which exist primarily to sell toys. Such a concept was alien and even illegal before everything changed in the 1980s, a time when a large majority of kids shows wouldn't have existed if they weren't a corresponding toy to sell. But it wasn't always like this, and today we're going back to the days before every cartoon got its own toy, in search of the first toy to get its own cartoon. It's easy to forget that there was a time when commercials were only targeted at adults, including toy advertisements, which made sense as children didn't have any money and couldn't go to the store and buy the product themselves. Advertising was featured during children's television programming, but again, the target audience were the children's parents, not the children themselves. All of that changed in 1952 when toy manufacturer Hasbro decided to cut out the middlemen and target children directly. The year before, Hasbro had bought the rights to the Mr. Potato Head toy line, and in April 1952, the first TV commercial came out. It was a huge success, and resulted in 1 million sales that same year. But that first toy commercial also presented some new problems and challenges, especially for parents. Advertising to children is problematic for a number of reasons. Until approximately the age of six, children cannot tell the difference between TV commercials and TV programs, and are also a lot more vulnerable to advertising propaganda than older viewers are. A phrase such as, every child must have one, is often taken literally by many young children, who cannot adequately identify and process advertising. This is especially pertinent in the case of PLCs, or program length commercials. In other words, television programs with commercial content. The Federal Communications Commission, or FCC for short, is an independent agency of the United States federal government that regulates communications by radio, television, wire, satellite, and cable across the United States. The FCC first encountered the problem of PLCs in the late 1960s, when toy manufacturer Mattel developed an idea for a show which attempted to combine the virtues of Archie Comics with Mattel's hugely popular Hot Wheels line of toy racing cars. The result was the 1969 cartoon show Hot Wheels, which debuted on the ABC network. Rival toy manufacturers complained that the cartoon was in reality a 30-minute toy commercial for Mattel's Hot Wheels line, while Mattel counter-argued that the show didn't advertise the cars, the show was about the cars, and therefore not a commercial, just a coincidence. However, the FCC ruled that the body of the Hot Wheels program contained commercial material and ordered ABC to treat large parts of the show as commercial matter, limiting how much time the network could use for other commercials. As a result, ABC cancelled the series, and while Hot Wheels was a rare, extreme example, a precedent had been set. The FCC maintained their position throughout the 1970s and closely scrutinised commercial content of children's television programming. All of that changed with the big screen debut of Strawberry Shortcake. In 1977, American Greeting Cards debuted a line of cards that featured the character, and within just two years, Strawberry Shortcake had grown into a global multimedia empire. A deal was made with toy manufacturer Kenner, who decided to go all out in its promotion of the upcoming toy line by spending $400,000 on a high-end animated TV movie called The World of Strawberry Shortcake. The movie was clearly not much more than an extended commercial for Strawberry Shortcake products, and the networks all turned it down. So Kenner instead offered it to independent television stations around the country, who were not subjected to the same regulations that the networks were. The TV movie premiered in May 1980, and American greeting cards enjoyed more than $1 billion in sales. Other manufacturers called on quick, and a flood of imitations followed. Made for TV animated movies like the Care Bears movie, Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer, and The Secret of the Sword all followed in the footsteps of Strawberry Shortcake, and were all relative successes.
At the same time, the National Association of Broadcasters were being threatened with an antitrust action and agreed to abandon its code of self-regulation, a code that had imposed some restrictions on advertising during children's programming. In 1984, the FCC adopted a complete U-turn in policy and decided not to implement any specific advertising or programming restrictions to replace those of the abandoned National Association of Broadcasters code. Broadcasters were no longer subject to any limits on advertising as they were before. The removal of the children's television advertising restrictions were challenged by the Action for Children's Television group, and the FCC were forced to rethink its guidelines towards the end of the decade. But by then, it was too late. Shows like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, The Care Bears, My Little Pony, and The Transformers dominated children's television throughout the decade. Between 1983 and 1988, the number of toy-based programs on the air jumped from 13 to more than 70, and revenue from sales of related products rose from 26.7 billion US dollars to 64.6 billion dollars. Despite efforts from concerned parent watch groups, the FCC declined to regulate these shows, even going so far as to allow a variety of profit-sharing schemes between the networks and the toy companies. In short, the toy industry boomed during this period and the FCC turned a blind eye to the wave of program-length commercials that dominated Saturday morning cartoons in the US throughout the 1980s, and which were then broadcast around the world. In 1990, Congress passed the Children's Television Act, a new law which required TV stations to include more educational and informative programming in their lineups and also placed huge restrictions on advertising and commercials which targeted children 12 years old and younger. This act largely contributed to the decline of the Saturday morning time slot. The big TV networks began to repackage their Saturday morning lineups in order to include more educational programming, while the restrictions on advertising also cut off large revenue sources for children's programs on network television, contributing further to the decline of the Saturday morning cartoon block. And that's the story of the relationship between cartoons and toys, a relationship loved by kids and loathed by adults and also one that took children's programming to new heights of popularity and which also ultimately doomed it. And if you're wondering who to thank or to blame for all of this, never forget Strawberry Shortcake and the role she played in changing the face of children's television forever. That's all we have time for for today. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you again soon for some more cartoon history.